what's it like to trade crypto on Kraken? Let's say I'm in a state-of-the-art gym surrounded by powerful-looking machines. Do I head straight for the squat rack? I could, but this gym has options like trainers, fitness pros, spotters to back me up. That's crypto on Kraken. Powerful crypto tools backed by 24-7 support and multi-layered security. Go to Kraken.com and see what crypto can be. Not investment advice. Crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to U.S. and U.S. territory customers by Payward Interactive Inc., PWI, DBA Kraken. View PWI's disclosures at kraken.com slash legal slash disclosures. It's the weekend, so relax and listen to some stories the whole family can enjoy. That's right, it's the Saturday Story Circle, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And now, a faux fiction audio production, published by Not A Pipe Publishing. Super Guy by Kurt Klopton. Super Guy, the generic alternative. Less superhero hype, same superhero quality. Chapter 14. It was lunchtime on the second day of the conference, and Oliver sat at one of the many round tables filling a large, open section of the conference center in Washington, D.C. He was eating an egg salad sandwich and chips with a friend he had made named Janice, otherwise known as Stormfront. She was Thunder Bay, Ontario's fairly recently created hero. She had already been through the rookie orientation sessions six months previously, but as Oliver had discovered, the conference wasn't just limited to the orientation of new superheroes. It also catered to veteran superheroes wanting additional training and continuing education credits. On his way to the conference, Oliver had envisioned himself in a small room with six or seven newly created heroes, all sitting in a circle on metal folding chairs and talking about their childhoods. Maybe there'd be some role-playing or situation scenarios. He wasn't sure. He didn't know why he thought about it this way, but he did. Instead, there were hundreds of heroes, rookies and veterans, dozens of celebrity speakers, and all kinds of breakout sessions, educational seminars, and optional trainings. All of this was held in a convention center that was a maze of little rooms, slightly bigger rooms, and even bigger than that rooms, and auditoriums. The Superhero Union, which organized the conference in which Oliver was forced to join, even before he could pick up his registration packet and complimentary tote bag full of goodies, had built the convention center in conjunction with the Department of Superhero Funding several years earlier. It was conveniently located next to the DSF's main complex and eliminated the costs of renting the conference space three times a year. Not to mention they could then rent it out for other conferences, which meant they were always busy since they were located in Washington, D.C. The four-day superhero conferences were held during the first weeks in January, May, and September, and combined both the new superhero orientation sessions as well as the veteran continuing education sessions. This was a format that allowed the new heroes to mix with the veterans and kept the union from having to do separate conferences. So what do you think of Metal's proposal? Asked Janice, between bites of her turkey and ham. She had brown eyes and long black hair that was thick and wildly out of control. She told Oliver her hair had been a little hard to tame before becoming a superhero, but then it transformed into a whole new animal when she took her serum and became Stormfront. Apparently, female heroes had a little more leeway in what was considered a good head of hair. When Oliver gave her a quizzical look after her question, she added, Of us joining the new group, what do you think? You know, I kind of had a hard time following what all he was saying. Every time he moves in the slightest, it sounds like one of those car crushers in a junkyard. And it doesn't help that he seems to fidget a lot, too. I thought he had to go to the bathroom. I know I have above average hearing, but I only caught about every fourth word. Yeah, like having a conversation during a car accident. 
I had the same problem, but I'd already spoken with the Creepers, a hero from Erie, Pennsylvania, so I knew that Metal was talking about. And the translation? It seems they want to restart their hero group from the Great Lakes area. Metal from Detroit and Buffalo from Buffalo, of course, were members of the original Great Lakes area defenders, otherwise known as GLAD. Janice paused for a second to wipe some mustard off her lip. Oliver had noticed she had nice lips. Real superhero quality. <clears throat> Glad? It sounds like some kind of really peppy outreach group for superheroes. I know. Anyway, when they couldn't all get along a few years ago, the group broke up. But now those two want to start it up again, except for a slight name change to distinguish it from the former group. They seem to have some ongoing issues with the other former members of GLAAD. Or maybe there's some kind of naming rights thing, but they want to start the Great Lakes area new defenders. Gland? Really? Well, I'm assuming Boyle or Goiter were already taken? Afraid so. In their defense, this was Metal and Buffalo. Their serums weren't exactly chock full of brain food. In fact, I think restarting the group is less about the security of the Great Lakes region and more about the weekly meetings, which usually entail some kind of buffet and the viewing of a sporting event. So what's the point of being in it? Well, I do suppose you have to consider the help that they could potentially give with a supervillain or natural disaster, however unlikely those are. But mostly it just looks good to be a member of a group. It carries a bit of prestige, and I'd bet your mayor or city council would recommend it. Mine did. Then they can say their hero is doing something for the greater good and such. Of course, they don't want me wasting much time on it since I'm their hero, but they still like to brag. I thought I might get stuck with membership in some Ontario or province-level group since there wasn't really a regional one anymore. Something bigger, like federal, is out of the question for someone of my status. But then they approach me about this. It's regional and pretty big compared to some, so it's more than I'd hoped for. <laughs> so you were actually hoping for something less than Gland? <laughs> well, I guess if you have to put it that way, but it's better than being part of the lame Ontario group. They don't even have weekly meetings. Monthly, I think. There's just not that much going on in Ontario. Janice had finished her sandwich and pulled an apple out of her complimentary tote bag. So who else is in it? Those first two, plus the creeper said he's in, and somebody from Cleveland, but I didn't get the name. If you and I say yes, that's six. The number they want, if I heard metal right. What do you think? She asked, and then gave him a shy smile. I'd like it if you were in. <clears throat> were you a flirt before, or is that the serum talking? Who knows? This is who I am now. Besides, don't think it is too much of a compliment. I just want someone around I know. I don't want to be stuck alone in some headquarters for a weekend with the Creeper, who absolutely lives up to his name. I mean, think of the most disturbingly creepy male uncle you have and multiply him by a hundred. Seriously, really creepy. How that makes a hero, I do not know. I thought serums were supposed to make you likable. Definitely the exception to the rule. Well, I can't think of a good reason not to join, besides the name. And I don't want to miss more flirting, so I'm in. Great. I'll tell Metal. I think he's going to be at the bomb disposal method seminar with me later. I'm sure there's some sort of paperwork we need to get started on to make it official. Maybe we'll all get together before the conference is over, depending on whether there's an appropriate game on television and some kind of buffet available. Can I ask you something? Uh, all flirting aside. Sure. Do you, uh, <clears throat> find it a little hard wearing a costume like that? said Oliver, finally asking the question he'd been thinking about since meeting Janice. Her costume was similar to Oliver's in that it was extremely tight, and in her case, generally scant. At least she had a cape, so she could keep herself covered. I mean, mine's tight too, but at least there's more of it. But even with that small caveat, I still haven't had eye contact with a regular civilian since I put this thing on. I... Definitely thought I'd have a problem with it at first. If for no other reason than the fact that I'm basically wearing a bikini full-time and live in Thunder Bay, not South Beach. But since we don't feel any normal temperature changes, it isn't really an issue. Otherwise, I have the cape to keep me covered most of the time, except when I'm fighting. But even then, I'm usually flying and causing a lot of havoc, like clouds and rain. So I don't 
think it's all that easy to see me. I'm sure I was like you when I first started, but I don't think about it anymore. I think that worry just goes away. It becomes normal. Maybe it'll be the same for you. Yeah, maybe. You could try another layer or something, said Janice, leaning forward a little and looking down at Oliver's lap as she thought. Oliver reflexively covered himself up. Come on now. We're both adults here and heroes. This is a professional discussion, which I might add you started. She waved at him to remove his hands, and he reluctantly did. Janice looked at his costume some more and nodded. Yeah, maybe you could put something over the top, she said as she sat back down. Then a big smile spread across her face and she added, (laughs) Because you'd never get anything under it. She laughed as Oliver blushed and scooted his chair in as far as it could go. That wasn't very professional. (laughs) I know, but I couldn't resist. Look, there are plenty of heroes walking around here in similar suits. It's just a part of the job. You have nothing to be ashamed of, and you'll get used to it soon enough. Just relax. Yeah, yeah, let's just change the topic. What are you going to next? Janice picked up her conference program and opened it to a marked page. I'm going to... Who's your poncho choosing the right sidekick at 1.30? And then it's the bomb disposal methods, what to do if you don't have the arm to get it off the planet seminar at 3 o'clock. We could meet for dinner around 5.30. What do you have? A bunch of short ones. All orientation stuff. Oliver dug into his tote bag, searching for his schedule. He pulled a file he had received from Emma that morning, which contained all the information the police chief had on the strange crime problems plaguing Milwaukee. He hadn't had any time to look at it yet because he was so busy with the required orientation sessions at the conference. Setting the file on the table, Oliver kept digging, finally finding his schedule and reading aloud. First up is Superhero Union. You're one of us now at one o'clock. I'd have to say that sounds boring and only ever so slightly different than half of the other sessions I've attended since I got here. Seems they really want to get their message across. You gotta love all the party propaganda. Then it's malpractice coverage, make sure you have a hero's worth at 2 o'clock, followed pretty fittingly, I might add, by limiting damage. Don't always throw the bad guy into stuff at 3 o'clock. Then city, state, and federal. Which hero are you? And how to get along at 4 o'clock. Yeah, I should be able to meet you at 5.30 for dinner. Great. How about meeting right back here? Then maybe we can go out somewhere? I know a good place in Baltimore. I could fly us. Sounds good to me, replied Oliver, mostly just imagining how the flying would go. Not so much about the speed or the heights, but more about the mechanics of holding on to Janice in her costume. Okay. I think I'm going to swing by the exhibition hall and check out some of the gadgets and vehicles before my session. You interested? I'd like to, but I want to take a look at this file, see if there's anything interesting in it. Besides, I think looking at all the cool stuff I can't have isn't exactly the best thing in the world for my morale. Okay. I'll see you later. Oliver watched her walk off towards the exhibition hall, still somewhat thinking about the flying, then checked the clock to see how much time he had left to go through the file. There was only about a half hour, which wasn't much, but he was itching to get started on it. In fact, it was a pretty good indication of just how much the super serum programmed him to fight crime, since he was choosing not to spend the extra time with Janice, and was even considering opting out of dinner if the file proved interesting enough. My god, what a sad, sad superhero I am. You have been listening to Super Guy by Kurt Klopton, a faux fiction audio production published by Not A Pipe Publishing. Look for the sequel to Super Guy coming this September. This recording, characters, and the situations within are the property of their author and creator and protected by copyright. If you wish to listen to more episodes in advance, search patreon.com, then faux fiction audio, and sign up to be a monthly patron. Or, 
Stay tuned until the next week for your free episode. We will see you then. Hi, this is John Bell. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In my podcast, Bells in the Battery, I usually surpass a thousand words. Why does he? But for every episode, there is also a picture. You mean that itty bitty picture that you see when you bring up the episode? Yes, that's called a thumbnail. They're drawn on thumbnails? <sighs> but now you can see all the thumbnail pictures in large format by going to the Bells in the Bat Free Gallery. Just go online to thebatfree.com. That's T H E B A T F R Y dot com. And click on Gallery. That's G A L L E. I think they can figure that out. You'll see all the pictures for all the episodes that were created by Jeff Music, along with other guest artists like the Lava Lee Brothers and famous animation director Dan Reba. Oh,、well, he knows one celebrity, and he really wants you to know about it. You'll also see lots of fan art. Over the years, and a few surprises. So, when you're in the mood for a picture instead of a thousand words, especially, especially his, his words, words, go to thebatfree.com and click on gallery. And be sure to clean your thumbnails before viewing. 